um, come up with prototypes and products. Um, I want to turn to the panel a uh, little bit to perhaps explain the process and thinking behind this. Uh, Mohan, um, just a question for you. Why actually are we innovating in India? Why can't we just import products from the West? Um, they're perfectly available, so many different countries, a lot of high quality, a lot of... Uh, why are we doing this? So, <coughs> so when you look at uh, innovating, so what, why do you innovate is a question that you ask. So let's look at the environment. How is that? So in the West, you have an extremely accessible infrastructure. Affordability is not an issue because it is funded by the insurance uh, system there. And there's a lot of support systems already built in, both in infrastructure and by law, by rights, so on. It's an extremely evolved situation in the West. Cut across to a place like India, especially rural India, right? The most unfriendly terrain that one can see even for normally abled persons, right? It's so much so much of uneven terrain, difficult terrain, you could, get, could fall down and get hurt so easily, so on and so forth. Second is a question of affordability. In India, all devices or, is not, or any of these uh, purchases are not driven by an uh, insurance system like in the Western world. It is to be paid for by the individual user. So affordability is a huge uh, factor in terms of trying to uh, build devices. Okay. Third is that the many of the requirements that you see in India are also fairly unique. Okay. We don't have large houses, for example. In rural in rural areas, when you go, you have small houses. So the kind of devices that are built abroad are built for diff completely different contexts as compared to what is required in India. Right? And also from a requirement perspective, in, uh, in the Western world, the products are built to be catering to a lot of uh, avoidance of liability. Right? So a wheelchair is made to take a 400 pound person, for example. Right? So they're all ex excessively over-engineered for different reasons. Right? Is that required that all that adds to cost? you have uh, support costs, okay? In India, support and distribution is a huge challenge. So how do you innovate and build products that will enable easy distribution and easy, easy servicing is a very important criteria for us to bear in mind. And it is for that reason that you cannot really, you take any <coughs> device that you get from the US, okay? I was, uh, I came in this wheelchair in the Bombay airport. It was very nice till you cross the curb and you go into the parking lot. Okay, this is a wheelchair that is used internationally. It's built for India also, but built for urban cities, urban roads. Even in the parking lot, there was not enough clearance on this particular wheelchair, even the potholes in the parking lot. And if this is the case in Bombay, in an airport, what will happen in rural India? So, so I wonder if I can turn to you. So you, you're, you're not from India originally, you're from Germany, uh, but you've actually had um, some time living in rural India. I'm just sort of wondering, you know, what are your insights from that experience? Um, is there something unique about India? Is there something <coughs> special about how disability is perceived? So first of all, um, I must say I, I lived in Tibet before, and, um, and I thought um, blind people in rural Tibet must be pretty much like blind people in rural India. Now, um, what I didn't figure out was uh, that, of course, these blind people that I knew, they went through our center in Tibet and were very, very confident also with their canes um, uh, walking around. Now, I came then to rural India or to India, and I must say I didn't uh, see a big difference between rural India and urban India in terms of blind people. Uh, let me give you one example. Um, I, met, um, I met someone from the rural part of India who, um, who explained to me the educational system and how grateful he was that he didn't have to have math 
in the, um, in the upper standards anymore because he's blind. So he didn't have to go to math training. So the government gave him the, the possibility to graduate without math. And he was very grateful for that. So I was wondering, so what, but were you able to actually um, do, uh, or uh, are you able to study, for example, psychology, uh, psychology or, or law? And he said, no, 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 but I can study literature. Yeah, English literature, for example. So this was now, now one from the rural area. From the rural and from the urban area, I met blind people who were not um, allowing themselves to walk with a white cane. And I asked them, why not? Because they said, well, it's obvious that we are blind. Um, and now, this was, uh, again, this was really um, weird to me that even the principal of the Trivandrum Blind School, he said, oh, I don't need a white cane. I said, okay, but how do you get around? He said, oh, my wife uh, uh, picks me up from work, you know? Um, yeah, this is something that was a bit shocking to me because I used to live in Tibet, and in Tibet, actually, the stigma of blind people is, is much stronger uh, than in India. In India, blind people are loved by their parents, maybe too much loved, maybe too much protected. So um, now we have here a panel about uh, technology and I want to come to this technology thing. I think before we give te technology or throw technology at blind people, I'm talking now about blind people really, um, we need to look at the empowerment factor also. We need to look at, um, uh, at the um, at the factor that blind people, first of all, in my opinion, need to accept blindness, need to embrace blindness, need to understand that there's nothing wrong to be blind. And then we can give them white canes, we can give them the computer systems, we can give them all the nice technology uh, so that they can use them for, uh, as a springboard for independence. One more sentence and then I hand over because you, I know you are worried that I'm talking too much. Um, um, no, one more sentence. For me, disability and imperfection is the mother of invention, is the mother of innovation. If we allow ourselves to accept, to embrace, to be grateful for what we are and what we can be. So, um, Roberto, uh, very interesting things said by Shabra. Uh, we, we <laughs> um, you know, as we started the program of innovation in India, I mean, do you think and do you, have you, as you follow the process, I mean, were we right to do it? Do we have the capacity? Can we address the issues of the stigma or the, 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 the need socially to sort of show that you're a normal person? Uh, do we have uh, the empowerment to go along with it? Do we have the talent within India to actually do uh, innovation? And is the need which drives innovation actually being shown? Um, um, you know, is this, this the right moment? Is there a right moment behind innovation in India? Well, um, I believe that absolutely yes. This is India is the perfect place where you can uh, you can start to innovate and to to create new devices for for people with disability, where there are mobility impaired or visually impaired or hearing impaired you have all the right ingredient currently because the educational level is quite high concerning to technical stuff to support people with disability like physiotherapist or prosthetic orthotic health services they are quite okay uh, you have a lot of vibrant and and uh, and the clever young generation educated I believe everything is, is here, can be done. Uh, to change the perception of the community, especially when we move to the, to the rural area, but I agree with that. Um, sorry, I don't, I don't know how to pronoun pronounce well your name, Sabria, but uh, is, there is not much difference in terms of, of perception between urban setting and, and rural setting. Uh, it's a question of ability. I believe that India, especially in the last two years, mostly because I've been in India um, since two years, but I've been in India before, ten years ago, so I, I have some parameter at least to compare. 
has done a big step forward in terms of perception. Even at government level, there is a turning of the concept of people with disability, not seen anymore as under the charitable model, uh, even not under the social model. But they are really doing, in the last two years, a step forward to see more people with disability as a resource, so as a potential. And again, the government is doing a lot in this, in this direction. Uh, yes, it's needed. It's needed. What is lacking is a strategy. It's a strategy how to bring those products, those innovative products, next to the people and to service this product to the people. Because one of the challenges that most of the innovation and technological, technological innovation is done in a standard way, why we are, while we are talking about people that need customized intervention. And in order to perform a customized intervention, we need to have services run by professional or social entrepreneurs together to serve these people in a correct way. It's not reaching the people, or how you call it in your cycle, the distribution, the reaching the device to the people, the ending point, but this the starting point. To make them better able and then to start to work around also the other needs. Okay. Because being human needs, they are multi-dimensional multi and multi-needs. I'm talking about education, livelihood, access to work, and so on. So can I press you a little bit? I mean, did the Enable Makerthon, did we come up with some, some good devices, some things that, of course, need the kind of service and support that require? But were you happy with, the, you know, with what the crowd produced uh, through the room? Yeah, I was happy. Uh, there were products uh, that are, um, to, you can use it in, in a double way. They are cost effective, they are not so expensive. Uh, there are products that even are our ideas, they are even uh, um, innovative on a global scale. I'm talking the, the sensor and the wearable device that can be applied to the device that we are giving to, to the people. <coughs> Everything nowadays that we can use can interact with us. We can have information out of it. And it's needed in order to do better. Okay. So um, I think you raised on also a very important point. It's about you know how do we actually distribute that. But before we distribute it, we have certainly prototypes and we need to produce these. So I'm, I'm going to turn to Rodney who does procurement both in India and in China for the ICRC. So is India the place is making India a truly viable proposition? Should we be making these in China or should we be making them in India? <laughs> okay. As we are in India, of course, uh, not in India. <laughs> um, <clears throat> three years ago, uh, I entered Asia and I was told, you know, you will see China is ahead by 10, 15 years uh, in terms of standards, in terms of uh, production and so on, uh, compared to India. Now, since uh, those three years, we have assessed like, uh, it's about 70 to 80 factories a year. It's uh, MNCs, uh, SMEs, or workshops. And the change is there. Uh, you, you can see the, the, the change of paradigm. Why? Because uh, more and more you have the new generation coming. They are benchmarking themselves with other countries, like also China, I would say. And now they are putting in place new standards, uh, social norms like SA8000 or BSCI. Uh, they are into lean management, so more uh, efficient way of working, of displaying the you know, manufacturing from a, a vertical integration, meaning like from A to Z. And uh, so we, we, we can see the shift. And uh, they are also investing in uh, new machines uh, with sensors, uh, tackling you know the security aspect, the hygiene, and uh, so they are passing more and more our uh, social, environmental, and uh, quality audits. So, just an example, you know, out of uh, the tender we have launched, 
One was for the uh, Ebola crisis uh, in uh, Western Africa. And um, the Indians were the most innovative. They offered a uh, new type of pipes, coffins, that would not spread the disease. They were the only one to think about this, about this solution, and that's because of the right ecosystem they have. They are linked with the, 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 the right university. Uh, they have very good R&D, research and development structure. So the, the whole ecosystem is there to find solutions for our needs. Okay.